In this week's episode of the Out of Soul podcast, we talk about five things that you can do to dramatically increase your chances of success as an artist. Welcome to the Out of Soul podcast. Each week we explore what it means to be an artist, finding your artistic voice, developing your artistic skills, and how to build a professional career and business around your art. Now, please welcome your host, artist and art teacher, Rod Moore. Okay, welcome to this week's episode of the Art of Soul podcast. My name is Rod Moore, and this podcast is all about those who are on a journey to develop their artistic career and to build a business and an income around their art. So if that's you, if, that, if you're an artist who's looking to do that, you've come to the right place. I'm going to share with you uh, the ideas, the strategies, the thinking behind what I've used to build a six-figure plus uh, art business. Now, most of that is around teaching art, but I have multiple streams of income and uh, my sales of my own art is growing all the time. So I'm going to be sharing with you in this podcast what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, the strategies I'm implementing, and uh, what's led me to be to you know to achieve a, a moderate level of success so far, and uh, where I'm heading in the future to, to increase that success. So again, this is a podcast designed for those artists who are really looking to go to another level and to start generating income um, through their art and build a business around their art. So today we're going to look at five things that you can do right now. And these aren't the type of things that most artists typically think about when they you know, think that they want to get more sales or grow their art business. Uh, but these are foundational type of things that without, very difficult to achieve success, not only as an artist, but pretty much in any field of endeavor, I believe. Right? So this is my personal opinion. You may have a different view, um, but please keep an open mind and, and listen in to what I'm about to share with you and, and implement some of these ideas. And, and I think you'll find that it gives you uh, greater certainty about the chances of you becoming successful as an artist. And without certainty, of course, there's very little hope. So the five things, we touched on these briefly in the last episode of the Art of Soul podcast when I talked about vision and mission. And I gave you some examples uh, of some artists who did have a big vision for their art business and where they were going. And uh, so I just want to sort of pick up on that and give you more of a framework this week with our five things that you can do. So number one clearly is vision. You know, if you don't have a vision of where you're going with your art business, um, then you probably may not ever end up anywhere close to success. So pretty much in any field of endeavor, everyone who's gone and achieved success beyond the average has had a big vision of where they're going. They had a, a picture in mind of what their end goal was, what their end game is, right? So as an artist, building a, an art business and an art career, it takes a long-term approach. There's very few artists who become overnight successes, um, you know, where they've just come out of nowhere overnight and uh, picked up a brush and started painting or started creating jewelry or, you know, whatever and become an overnight success. It's so rare that it's not even worth considering. So what, do, what does everyone else do who becomes successful? They have a long-term view of their art business and they develop a vision of where they see themselves heading, right? So I think it takes probably five to 10 years uh, to really build a, a foundation of a successful art business. At least that's been my experience. I've been at it now for nine years, right? I did my first oil painting in November 2010. And at the time of recording this, it's almost November 2019. So that's nine years. Now, I fluffed around with some watercolor before that, but I really got serious when I did my first oil painting. So it's taken me nine years. Now, I could have done it quicker than that, I believe. I made a lot of mistakes along the way. I took a year out halfway along the journey. I probably could have done it in five or six years, right? Um, pretty rare for somebody to come along out of nowhere with no art practice currently underway and do it under five years, I would think. Certainly it's been done and there'll be people who do it in the future. But for most of us, it requires a long-term view of what we're doing. And the only way you stick at something long-term is if you've really got a strong vision of where you're going. Now, the great thing about being an artist, you know, whether you, regardless of how you define the process of earning an income with your art, you know, whether it's selling original work or uh, teaching or a combination of those or licensing when there's a number of different income streams that are available to you. Um, but the great thing about art is that there's no retirement age. As long as you're healthy, 
body and, and sound mind, you can continue to practice your art and earn an income from it into your 70s and 80s. And that's what I intend to do, right? So depending on what age you are right now, that could be 10 years, that could be 20 years, could be 30 years. And um, one thing that's guaranteed, unless you have a really solid vision around your art practice, you know, you're probably not going to be there in 10 years' time. If you're only having a go and you're just playing with it, um, it's a bit of fun, you know, whatever, then you're probably not going to build an art business out of it. So the first thing you want to do is really get a clear picture in your mind of where you could be in, say, 10 years and 20 years' time. And uh, that's what I have recently sat down and done. Because we're coming up to the end of this decade and we're about to start a brand new decade, I've been giving a lot of thought to what is my vision for 10 years. Now, because my business is multifaceted, you know, I, I haven't got just one income stream, I've got a, a range of different income streams built around my art. Uh, I've developed a vision for my business in several areas. So a big part of my business is teaching art, um, but I also see myself moving into a space of mentoring and inspiring and coaching artists because I'm a working artist myself. I earn my full-time six-figure-plus income from my art, right? So I think I've got something of value to offer to other artists, which is part of the reason why I started this podcast. So I've got a vision for you know the mentoring, coaching side down the track. It's something I'm going to unroll uh, over the next five to 10 years. And I've also got a vision for my own art practice, right? So in my own right, I'm a landscape, contemporary landscape artist. And at the moment, my sales of my uh, of my own work make up around ten to fifteen percent of my income. I want to move that up to uh, you know a more significant number like thirty or forty percent over the next or certainly the next decade, but in the next few years, that's that's my uh, primary aim with my own work. So I've got a vision around those three core areas in my art business, right? The teaching people to paint, my own art practice, and of course coaching mentoring of other artists and because I really want to give something back and help artists who are serious about building an art business um, so I've developed a vision around each of those areas and basically when I say a vision it's a written statement you know I've got a journal and I highly recommend that everyone should have a journal to write ideas down to brainstorm to, to get your thoughts out of your head and into you know into writing you should have a journal and so I spend time each day writing in my journal and I start to formulate a vision for my business in, in those three areas in 10 years time. Where do I see myself going? And that vision could be everything from what am I doing on a daily basis, what my studio is going to be like, uh, what the business model is going to be, what the revenue generated and profit. You know, So it's a holistic view, how it makes me feel, um, how I'm able to help other people. Uh, you've got to develop a real holistic 360 degree view of the business as you see it, okay? Every successful business has a vision. This is why CEOs get paid such big dollars disproportionately to the office workers in a company is because the CEO is the visionary, right? And creating a vision that you get the whole business locked onto is, is not easy to do. A lot of people fail at this and it's not gonna happen overnight. You're not gonna just wake up and say, well, there's my vision, right? It's something that will formulate and develop. So with my own art practice, my vision has been evolving over time. Um, my vision you know, started out with one particular style and approach to art. And the more I painted and the more I found my voice and, and found what really inspires me to paint more, has changed, you know? So it, it's an evolving process, but it's important that you have a point in the future that we're aiming for. So spend some time this week really thinking about your vision, okay? So then the next thing is a sense of mission. The mission is what are we trying to achieve, right? So the vision is kind of conceptual. The mission now starts to solidify that into a uh, very definite statement. So with a mission, you know whether you're on track or off track achieving it. Uh, my mission with the learn to paint side of my business, the teaching side, is to uh, empower beginners around the world to have the confidence to know that they can learn to paint, that they can develop artistic skills. It's, it's a sense of mission that I have around that, right? Um, and I feel very driven to try and keep improving what we do at the Learn to Paint Academy, uh, to reach out to more and more students around the world who are struggling to learn to paint right now. Because I know I've got a methodology of teaching that is incredibly effective for those who embrace it. So I have a sense of mission about wanting to share that out with as many people around the world as I can, right? 
Um, if you look at my own individual art practice as Rod Moore Art, um, my my vision has been evolving to more of a contemporary landscape approach. Uh, but my mission in recent times, I've, I've become more and more concerned about uh, environmental issues in the land and drought and things that you know are, are problems here in Australia right now. Um, so many areas in drought, and so my mission is to use my artwork as a as a uh, a vehicle to raise awareness around environmental issues, um, as much as it is to paint paintings that connect with people and that people love. Right, so um, I'm all about sharing the beauty of our landscape with people all around the world. Um, and those who love nature and the land will connect with that. So I have a, a sense, of, you know, sense of mission around using my art for a purpose greater than just selling artwork, right? So I'd really challenge you to think about what is your mission in what you're doing. Uh, I mentioned last week uh, Wyland, the the uh, the marine artist, who his mission is to help prevent. Um, you know, marine life being destroyed and the oceans being polluted. So he's, he has a very big sense of mission about that. And his artwork is just really a vehicle for fulfilling that mission. The mission is bigger than the artwork. So I'd challenge you to give some thought to that. What is your mission, right, with your art? Now, from there, we need to set some goals. So goal setting is something that we hear about this in the personal development space and the business space. It's not something that artists generally do. I don't know. I mean, have you ever heard of a, a group of artists getting together and talking about their goals? I certainly haven't, right? As far as, I don't know too many artists that have a set of written goals for their art business. I think I'm, I do, right? Um, but whether other artists do or not, you know, and when, when I say goals, I mean written, specific, measurable and tangible goals. Um, you know, so if you want to, if you want to be a professional artist, for instance, right? As as an example, if you want to be a professional artist who earns their income from selling their artwork as the main source of income, then you need to have a goal around production of art, right? You can't just produce art when you feel like it. When 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 inspiration strikes or the muse comes and and uh, stirs you into action, right? That that's just not going to cut it as a professional, and. Um, if you're a professional, you need to have production goals, right? You need to know to earn X income, I need to produce Y pieces of art each year. So to earn $100,000 a year, I would, and let's say uh, my average price is $1,000 to keep it really simple, right? So to, to earn $100,000 in retail sales of my artwork, my average price is $1,000, I need to produce 100 paintings, or do I, right? If you're really, really good and you sell absolutely everything you produce, then yeah, it's a hundred, right? But so many of us aren't that good. So you might sell one out of three paintings. Therefore, your production goal to hit $100,000 with an average price of a thousand, but only selling one in three, your production goal is 300 pieces of art a year, right? Now, to produce 300 pieces of art a year, you have to divide that by 50 weeks a year, take a couple of weeks off. So that means you're going to produce six pieces of artwork every week. That's a production goal. So you can then use that as a goal that every week I produce six pieces of artwork, finished artwork, ready for the marketplace, not, not studies and demos and um, playing around with ideas. This is finished product that can be put into the marketplace. That's a production goal, right? Six quality pieces of artwork. So that then, with that written goal, six pieces a week, um, which is what, 25 pieces a month, 300 pieces a year. Now you've got some written tangible goals around production, right? Um, which helps you then get clarity around how much time you need to free up to be in the studio, okay? So you can start to create a plan from here, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, but having specific and written tangible goals are critical because that way you get a month into it and you can look at the month just gone and say, okay, my goal was to do 25 finished pieces of artwork this month and put them into the marketplace. How many have I done? Let's check, right? Um, and you can see whether you're on track or off track. And I've only done 10 this month. So we've got a problem. Now we're, we're 15 pieces of artwork behind our schedule to hit our target income. So now what we need to do is factor that in over the next couple of months to increase production to be able to take up the slack from the, the month we only did 10. 
Is this making sense? Um, I hope it is, right? So having specific goals, how much money do I want to, do I want to earn? How many exhibitions do I want to have this year? Like solo exhibitions and group shows do I want to have this year? Or even virtual exhibitions, which we'll talk about in future podcasts. How many of those are we going to have this year? Um, what art prizes am I going to enter into? What residencies will I apply for, right? What grants will I apply for, apply for if you believe in them, right? I don't particularly believe in them, but perhaps that might be part of your overall income strategy. Um Setting some written tangible goals, some hard numbers is important, right? And I would set goals for 10 years and for the coming year, right? And then each month, just divide that goal out by 12. And, and, and then, you know, you've got a clear picture of what needs to happen, what level of activity needs to happen for that month, okay? So with that in mind, we've now got a vision, we've got a sense of our mission, and we're starting to break all of that down into tangible achievable, measurable, realistic goals, right? Now what we need to do is have a plan to achieve those goals. Plan, right? So that plan could be as simple as blocking out time in your calendar for being in the studio. If I have to produce six finished pieces of artwork um, a week, I need a plan on how I'm going to do that. So part of that plan is blocking out time. I'm going to spend five hours a day for six days a week in the studio purely producing artwork, right? And if I do that, then that should help me create the number of pieces of artwork that I need. Um, the other part of that plan might be collecting reference material, right? So I'm going to spend two hours a week going out on location, getting photos, making sketches and studies. So I've got plenty of reference material for the artwork I produce. Um, part of the plan might be what skill building you're going to engage in you know you're going to do little studies on a daily basis or are you going to take courses for the month so having a plan for your overall business development a plan for your marketing you know like how many times you're going to share on your social media accounts your instagram and your facebook page on a daily basis or weekly basis you know what what's the mix going to be you're going to do live video are you going to do just do photos is it going to just be instagram so having a bit of a plan around that i think is important and, you know, equally, when we go back to setting goals, number three, um, having goals around how you're going to grow your social media presence and your email database, have goals all around all of that, you know, uh, and then build a plan on if I'm going to set a goal to have 500 people following me on Instagram, I need a plan on how I'm going to achieve that, right? So maybe I need to go and research how to grow my audience on Instagram, okay, and learn a bit more about that. That's part of my plan, right? Um, the plan needs to have time for both production of product and building of your audience and marketing. So you need to factor all of that into your plan. And so I'd have a weekly calendar up on the wall that shows, you know, every Friday morning I'm doing this between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. I'm going to just focus on um, listing all my new paintings up on online galleries on my own website, right? So you, you, you what you want to do is you want to chunk different activities together and build out a plan for yourself. So there's never coming, like you never arrive on a Wednesday and wonder what you're going to do that day. I mean, you do that if you're a hobby artist, right? But professionals don't do that. They know what they need to do on a daily basis. If you've got a show coming up and it's two months away, you, you know what you need to do to get ready for that show. So you focus all your energy into that and you have a plan around that, right? Um, if I'm going to do a show in two weeks time, I need to have my paintings dry two weeks out so I can get the photo, you know, so you work out a plan for yourself for these things. And again, this doesn't have to be a written document, like a business plan. We're not into that sort of thing. We're artists, right? So I just jot notes down in my journal. And one of the things that I'm doing is I'm going to put together a one page um, business plan for artists which will just be one A4 sheet um, and it'll have blanks for you to fill in and I'll do a little video to go with that. So look out for that. I'll make that available over the next month or so. Um, keep an eye out for that. It'll just help you have a bit of a template around um, planning out your, your business and so on. So let's just recap. Number one, so we're talking about five things to help you grow your art business. Number one is to have a vision of where you're going, which is long-term Number two is to operate with a sense of mission, you know, a purpose greater than just your artwork, even though your artwork's critically important, but having a bigger reason than just you, you know, just rather than just making it all about you. Number three is to set written, tangible, measurable, 
uh, goals for yourself, right? So for 10 years out and one year out. Uh, number four then is to plan out how you're going to achieve those goals, to start to formulate a plan. And here's number five. Number five is your mindset, right? Because I know a lot of people who listen to this will have already tuned out. They'll think it doesn't make sense or it doesn't apply to me. Artists aren't meant to think about business and vision and goals and <laughs> plans. We're just meant to create. We're creatives, right? So there's a certain mindset that comes with being a professional artist. And uh, what I might do in next week's episode is, is just do a comparison between um, struggling artists right, and professional artists in any field. doesn't matter if you want to be a writer, uh, a photographer, a jewelry maker, potter, or a visual artist like I am, a, a painter, right? Um, there is a big difference between the way that non-professionals, people who are spinning their wheels and struggling and not getting anywhere, and professionals and, and how they operate and how they think, right? So your mindset is critically important. I've met so many artists who just think the wrong way. Their thinking defeats them before they even try. They, they're already beaten mentally. And if you're beaten mentally, then there's no hope. Because you'll try all these things, but you'll do it all with a handbrake on, right? You, you'll go, oh, okay, I'll try that. I'll um, set a production schedule. But in the back of your mind, you're going, you know, but this is just more work. Why do I want to create more work for myself? And I could never do 100 paintings in a year anyway. And so this negative dialogue is there constantly talking you out of doing the things that professionals do, right? Now, I have to say, I've got a pretty empowered mindset, but that doesn't mean I'm always on and positive. I struggle like everyone else, right? The key is not so much that you have a negative mindset and being becoming positive, but it's being able to shift your focus away from that doubting voice, that thing that holds you back, that limiting voice, that negative self-talk. Be able to say, okay, I'm caught up in a, a a story here. It's a negative story and it's pulling me down. To be able to recognize that and have the consciousness to say, that's not getting me anywhere. I have to go and take action on part of my plan. That That's really the big difference in mindset is just having the awareness that you're caught up in a negative cycle, right? Um, so you have, to, you have to work on your belief. So you need to go and find examples of artists who have made it big, have become successful and study their lives and study what they do and look at you know, but you've got to do it with a positive mindset and look for the things that they're doing that you could embrace. It could be something simple. But you, what you don't want to do is go and look at them and say, oh, yeah, it's okay for them, though, because they paint abstracts, right? And if I was painting abstracts, sure, I'd get $5,000 for a painting as well. But I paint this, right? So you've got to be careful about putting your own prejudices over doing that because that's a faulty mindset. It's a faulty way of thinking um, pretty much in Every style, every medium, there's somebody creating success and, and lots of people who aren't. So um, you know, don't don't overlay on someone else's success your negativity, your your faulty mindset, your lack of belief, right? <clears throat> and I'm not saying that to be rude or anything like that. I'm saying it because through my observation of having met hundreds of artists and and talked to thousands through the Learn to Paint Academy, um it just amazes me how many of them really just haven't worked on their own thinking, their own thoughts, and that they're predominantly um, operating with a negative mindset, right? So you need to develop a positive mindset. You need to go to work on yourself. Um, you know, let me give you a little example, right? If I was to ask most artists that I know to, you know, to hold a seminar and stand up in front of a group of people and talk about their art, um, or, you know, one of the things I'd suggest to artists, if you want to get well known, is not just to mix in art circles, but to go out on the speaking circuit and speak at community groups all around your local area so that your name gets known outside of the art circle that you're in right now. Because these people aren't buying your art or not enough of it to earn an income. So you need to get out in the community, right? So one of the recommendations I would make is to go out and speak, to, to do one hour speaking presentations about you and your art to community groups. Now, as soon as I say that, artists say, oh, nobody would want me to come and speak, which is ridiculously wrong. Um, you could go and speak at Rotary groups, at Lions groups, at Country Women's Association groups, and on and on. If you look in your local area, you will find that there's lots of community groups, and many of them have regular speakers at dinner and so on. So how do you get on that speaking circuit and talk about your art? You ring them, right? Now, I've suggested this to other artists in the past, and of course, one of the things that comes back is, I'm too afraid to speak. 
I don't speak in public, right? Now, I completely understand that. And so I'm just talking about this to give you an example of how mindset can hold you back. I completely understand fear around public speaking. I was terrified to speak in public, right? So knowing that I had to improve my mindset and my skill set, I enrolled in Toastmasters. And after two and a half years of Toastmasters, um, I feel comfortable speaking now, right? So don't allow this voice in your mind to say, I couldn't do that because, and give you a reason, there's always a way to solve that reason. I was terrified of public speaking. I knew that speaking was going to become a key part to me becoming successful in my art business, right? Um, so I went and joined Toastmasters. And after two and a half, nearly three years, I feel confident now, which is why I can do podcasts and videos uh, without notes, right? I can just turn the camera on and start talking, right? And hopefully it's something of value <laughs> that I'm sharing, but um, you know, I don't have to worry about it anymore. Whereas three years ago, I was terrified of it. It's a skill set and a mindset that I've developed, right? Now, if you want to be a successful working artist, I'll give you a tip right now. The future for successful working artists is their ability to be able to communicate with large numbers of people, right? You need to be able to connect with large numbers of people to be able to find those collectors who will buy enough of your art to keep you in business, right? So your ability about and and please don't if you're sitting there right now saying no no my art speaks for itself that's absolute BS, right? That that's fear talking. That's your fear internally of going out and speaking about you and your art. That's all that is, right? Your art doesn't speak for itself because I'll tell you why. There's more art being produced than ever before, and your art will get lost in a sea of art. If you don't develop the, the personal power to be able to stand up and speak about your art. Now, right now, we are in the greatest time in the history of the world for artists because we have video online. We have live stream online. And the artists that will win, that will go on and become successful in the next decade, 2020 through to 2030, you know, when, when we enter the virtual reality age and the artificial intelligence age, the artists who will win will be the ones who can speak confidently about themselves and their art, that they've got a story to share about their art, that they can share a mission that they're involved in and their art serving, helping to serve that mission, right? Um, so if you want to be a successful artist in the future, basic communication skills are essential. And if you don't feel you've got those right now, go and join Toastmasters. I don't get paid to, <laughs> to, to voluntary organization. I'm passionate about sharing it because I believe it's a skill set you can't live without if you want to create success. Go and join Toastmasters, right? Um, and if you want to be a successful artist, you need to start using video, right? What I'm doing right now is I'm doing our podcast, which many of you will listen to on your mobile phone. It'll be audio, but I'm also recording the video at the same time. Um, as I develop my voice with my own personal art, I'm doing more and more videos talking about me and my art, right? And the more you use video, the more you'll rise above the, the, the thousands of artists that are out there right now. Otherwise, you'll get lost in a sea of artists, right? But don't let that negative voice talk you out of becoming a good communicator. So this is what I'm thinking about. When I'm talking about mindset, there's so much to do with mindset. I just want to sort of rattle your cage a little bit and get you thinking about and questioning yourself. Are you negative right now? You know, predominantly. Nobody's 100% one way, but predominantly, are you negative, right? And, and I have a policy that if artists are too negative, they're too beaten down, um, then I don't hang out with them, right? As much as I love them, I love artists, I, I love creative people. But if you're too negative, I'm not going to spend time with those people because my mindset's too valuable. I'd rather exist in a bubble than, than the mix of a whole lot of negative artists, right? Um, because other artists' mindsets will affect yours. So you've got to work on your mindset. You've got to you know, read books that help you empower yourself and to develop belief in yourself and to develop a belief in the fact that you can build a career out of your art, right? Um, if you don't have that belief, and if you don't have an empowered mindset, and if you don't have a predominantly positive outlook, then you're probably not going to achieve success. I don't mean to be harsh or blunt. I just want to give you the real talk, right? And be transparent. Um, I had to work on my mindset in order to be able to create some level of success. Um, now, I think, you know, we're not talking about me and my success. Let me put it into context. I, you know, even though I do, uh, I've, I've got a fairly successful business. I do six figures plus. I don't share any of that to brag with you because I don't think I've arrived, right? I think I've only built a foundation 
and it's nowhere near what I see possible and, and see in my future. Um, you know, I've achieved this much out of, and for those listening in the audio, I've got my fingers up showing about an inch. And, you know, the bigger picture is far bigger than that, right, for me. Um, so I'm not saying the way I became successful and telling you about that to try and brag and say I've arrived, that's clearly not my intention. I have a very practical view of things, right? Um, but by comparison with most artists, um, then you know, most of them would see what I've done as being a level of success, not ultimate success, obviously. Um, so let's recap. We've got five keys for you to work on. And I really want you to think about these. I want you to burn these into your into your mind, right? Um, that you need to be operating with this as a mental framework to move forward. So in order to be a success in anything, we need to have a vision of where we're going. We need to look into the future and see where we're hoping to arrive at. And this can be conceptual, the vision, but as we move next into step number two, which is having a mission, something bigger than ourselves, this is where we start to write a statement about what we are and what we represent and what we believe in, right? A mission that's bigger than ourselves. And then we start to set tangible goals, a 10-year goal, and breaking that down into a one-year goal, a series of goals for the next one year, right? A goal around your income, a goal around how many exhibitions, a goal around your production, um, you know, I've got a goal around the new studio that I want to get um, in the next year or two, because uh, at the moment I operate my studios in my garage here at home, which I don't mind, but I've just run out of space, right? So I've, I've designed plans for the studio that I want, and it's, you know, it's a goal that I've got for the next two years to move into that studio. So number three is goals. Number four then is a plan on how we're going to achieve those goals. You need to break it down into daily activities, right? Or, or at least weekly activities, production goals and time management goals, marketing goals, uh, marketing plans rather. So that's number four. And number five is our mindset. You need, part of your plan needs to be working on your mindset, okay? Um, you need to improve your thinking. You need to become a possibility thinker. You need to be somebody who's empowered by their thinking rather than drawn or held back by their thinking. The worst place to be in, right, is somebody who's got goals and ambitions and a vision and a plan, but they're held back by their mindset, right? They've got all these things mapped out of what they want to achieve, uh, and they're really excited about that, but their mindset, their limited thinking is holding them back from taking action. That might be fear, right? That could be part of your negative mindset, fear around what will people think of me, right? I used to have a fear around what people would think of me, especially family and friends, Um now I couldn't give a rip because I don't pay my mortgage, right? So you need to really question what's holding you back mentally. So you don't want to be that artist who's got a vision, mission, goals, and a plan, but they're mentally held back by their own negativity and self-doubts and so on. You need to work on that because otherwise it's like having one foot on the accelerator, flat out, and one foot on the brake. What happens then is you've got um, the engines going at a million miles an hour, but you're not actually moving forward. So using up all this energy, there's lots of noise and smoke coming out the back. And um, anybody around the car will think, wow, this is, you know, there's something going on. There's energy being used, uh, but you never actually get anywhere. Right? All you do is burn the motor out in the end. You become a burnout, bitter, twisted, sour artist. Right? And then you start saying things like, back in the 1980s, I used to sell a lot of artwork, right? Well, <laughs> forget that. Forget that. It's not coming back that time. Um, so if you've got one foot on the ha on the brake and one foot on the accelerator, you need to you need to identify that and, have, and, and really work on how am I going to fix that, okay? Now, what I've talked about here, vision, mission, goals, a plan, and mindset, these are critical. You know, before you do anything else, before you find your artistic voice, before you set up a website and promote yourself on social media, these things are foundational, right? Um, so you need to get these right. And sometimes you need somebody else to talk to about those things. So one of the things that I'm doing, I've had some very positive feedback from the podcast from people who have listened into it, and I've had inquiries from people asking if I could help them, right? So I can't help everyone, obviously. Um, but what I am going to do is open up uh, a number of, um, probably maybe three or four over the next month, coaching opportunities. Um, 
and we'll sit down for an hour and I'll help you work out your vision, mission, and goals. We'll do those three first, right? Because in an hour, there's only so much you can achieve. Um, so if you're interested in having a coaching session where I can help you work through what is your vision, what is your mission, and what goals have you set for yourself, and I'll give you some assignments to do and so on, and then we'll talk for an hour. Uh, if that's of interest to you, get in contact, right? You can email me at rodmoreart at gmail.com and say you're interested in the coaching. Um, it's $250 an hour US, and um, you know, for that you'll get a, a plan that will help you map out your vision, your mission, and goals as a starting point. So if that's of interest, get in contact. Um, it's not going to be for everyone, obviously, and I'm going to limit to how many people we can take on board for that. So just to recap, really as a starting point, before you do anything else, so you want, might want to spend time over the next few weeks thinking about your vision, Right? and journaling, writing it down in your journal, identifying a mission that's bigger than yourself, right? setting some written, tangible, achievable, measurable goals right? in writing that you commit to, developing a plan of action, right? how are you going to achieve these goals? So it's not the plan of action is not about how you're going to achieve the mission or the vision. It's about the goals, the one-year goal I've just set for myself. How am I going to achieve that? Right? Um, so that's number four. And then and then working on your mindset. You need an ongoing program for developing your mindset as an artist, right? I really believe that. I'm constantly reading and doing courses and working on myself because I recognize that I'm not an infallible human. You know, I, I have lots of self-doubts and negativity, which I have to keep weeding out and focusing on the positive. So I hope that's helped. I'd love to hear your comments, your thoughts, your feedback on this. Um, because it's not really, we're not really talking about arty things. These are foundational things for success in anything in life. But without them, your art career is not going to flourish. So I wanted to really cover those early on in this podcast. And um, from there, we can then start to really you know, launch into um, setting yourself up for success as an artist. And next week, we'll talk about the difference between professional artists and non-professionals. Okay, And um, we'll talk about some interesting books that I've read uh, that helped me to get the, cl the clues to becoming professional, um, crossing that line, right, and becoming a professional. So we'll talk about that in next week's uh, podcast. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Artist Soul Podcast. My name's Rod Moore, and uh, you'll find me at rodmore.art or at the Learn to Paint dot Academy. That's www.learntopaint.academy or www.rodmore.art. See you next week. Make sure this week you spend some time thinking about those five things and doing some work there. Cheers for now.